Hey guys, um, it's me again. Uh, I hope you're doing well. And again, welcome to another session of uh, Ed Talks. Um, and today, what we're going to be talking about is um, again, we're going to be talking about partial derivatives, and we're going to also start to bend into the idea of linear approximations and how to kind of go about that. Um, and the first thing I want to do, though, and, and this can all kind of be hopefully seamless here, is to bring up the ideas of what geometrically the idea of a partial derivative is, and then to extend that to being able to find the approximation for a tangent plane. Um, so kind of the end, or some, somewhat of 14.3 and 14.4 in Stewart um, here. So without further ado, let's kind of tackle this. So the first thing I want to, again, address and is, is the idea of partial derivatives again is if I go in a direction, right? If I'm on a height, if I'm, if I'm imagine I'm on a mountain range and I have two directions, I want to go in a positive x axis and a positive y axis, and I go in that direction, what that partial derivative with respect to x tells me is if I go in the x direction, what is the change in height? Where's the rate of change in the height of my function? How high am, am I going to be going upwards? Or am I going to be going downwards? Fx would be positive if I'm going upwards. Fx would be downward, the negative if I'm going downwards. And similarly, F, Fy. There's a, another interpretation that you could have of it, and it actually brings up this exact same idea. And it's a little bit more clear, I hope, um, in terms of maybe the geometry behind it. So let's at least take um, a pretty normal function, um, not, not, nothing too uh, kind of crazy here. So let's assume I have something like this. I have uh, f of xy is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, this is actually um, a paraboloid, kind of going downwards and opening downwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the partial derivatives um, at 1, 1, and at 1, 1, in the x direction and the y direction. So my goal is to find fx of 1, 1 and fy at 1, 1 here. Now, how do I go about doing this? And it's going to be all extending around here. So let me first of all draw what this function is. So we can kind of draw this paraboloid in a couple of different ways. Y and Z here. So what I'm going to do instead is, is to kind of draw, draw this. What I've noticed is that Z is equal to zero. If this function height's at zero here, what am I going to be on my x, y plane? Well, if I do z equal to 0, I hope you would see that this is going to be 0 is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared, which I can kind of move over and get x squared plus y squared is equal to 2. x is equal to 4, sorry. Which is actually just a circle of radius 2. So that means my function height, once I'm at my x, y plane, is going to be just on the x, y. This is my contour, right? Where am I at? This is going to be exactly on this plane. So I'm going to draw this. I'm only going to use the first quadrant here. Um, the first, sorry, octant. Here's going to be to, to draw this. It's going to be just a little bit easier. And similarly, we can kind of do this everywhere. And we note here when x is 0 and y is 0, we have a z being a 4. So we'll have a 4 right here. And then we'll also have down here, this is going to be at 2. And this is going to be at 2. OK, so again, this is my surface here, this kind of surface here. Um, in my first, my, my first quadrant. Now, my goal now is to figure out my partial derivatives at 1, 1. So I'm going to plot 1, 1, hopefully with this black marker. So I know this is 1, and this is 1 here. So let's kind of go in the middle, and we go up. So let's assume I'm at this point on my, you know, on my plane here. Um, on, my, on my surface here. This is my point. We can find very, very quickly what this point is by plugging this in, and we can find that this is actually at a height of three. I'm at a height of two. F of one, one, which is four minus one minus one, which is equal to two. So we're at a height of two. So this point right here is actually one, one, two. Now, I'm gonna start with Fx. What I wanna do now is again, think about what does Fx mean? What does the idea of a partial derivative mean? That means I am keeping y constant. I am letting y be just constant. That's all I'm having, right? I'm letting y be constant, and I'm seeing how I change in x as I move in the x direction, right? As I move in the x direction here, if I move in the positive x direction, which is in this direction here, right? As I move in this direction, how is my function height changing? 
I hope you'd see if I'm on this surface here, if I move in this direction, I should probably be moving downwards. Okay. But what I want to do instead is I want to say, okay, well, if I'm keeping Y constant, this is really saying, okay, I'm going to keep Y at one. Right? I'm going to keep y at 1. So I'm going to draw the a plane y equal to 1. Okay? So I'll draw the plane y equal to 1. And the plane y equal to 1 is actually just this plane right here. And it's going upwards like this, kind of extending out like this. Now, if you notice here at y equal to 1, I'm actually going to be getting kind of this in the intersection of this plane, imagine I pick a piece of paper, I like push it right here. I try to find the intersection of this plane now that, that I've now constructed and the surface itself. I hope you'd think that this might be kind of the, 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 the intersection between the plane y equal to one and the surface f of x, y. This is the intersection here. And now what's actually going to happen, this intersection, this, this black line is the intersection. If you notice, I can actually draw a tangent line. There's actually many different tangent lines. Let me just kind of remind ourselves of something here. That's why I have to be very careful. If I have any 3D surface, I have infinitely many different tangent lines. So I have to tell you which direction I'm making my tangent line in. In this case, I'm telling you I'm going in the Y direction. I'm going specifically, I, I want y to be constant and I'm moving in the x direction. And now I'm gonna find out what the slope of that line is. Okay? So if I draw that, let me see if I can draw this now with green. I have no other colors. Did you get something like that, like that? That's my line here. That's my line. So if that's my line, I'm going that way, this tangent line, this tangent line right here has a slope of fx at 1, 1. And that is the idea of a partial derivative in its most basic sense. I take the intersection of the y equals 1 plane, whatever, the, just the y equals b, if I want to do this very generally, y equals b. I take the intersection of that with the surface. I draw that curve of intersection, as I've done here. And then I find the tangent line at that curve, in the direction of that curve. And so if you see here, this is going to be a negative slope because I'm going in a positive x direction, I'm going to be a negative slope, which makes sense, as we've seen. That's kind of the idea. So now we can actually calculate this more specifically by taking the partial derivative with respect to x. If you actually note fx here, it's just going to be negative 2x, right? The y and the 4 go away. And so therefore, you can come back up here and get that this is actually negative 2. So the slope of this tangent line is negative 2, and that is the physical interpretation of what fx actually means. Now, we're going to do the same exact thing for y. Same exact thing for y. So let's do it. Again, I'm now going to let y, x, x equal to 1 be a constant. I'm now going to be moving in the y direction. And I wanted to hold x to be constant. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to construct the plane x equal to 1, which is parallel to the yz plane. So I can again do this. Kind of coming up like that. This intersection here of this plane. And if you notice, the intersection of this plane is going to be something like that. There. Something like that here. Good. And again, I'm going to now take the intersection of this plane that I've constructed with the, with the f of x, y. And what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to draw the tangent line. It's going to be this guy. It's going to be this guy. So that's that guy, right there. And the slope of that tangent line is f, y at 1, 1. And in a very similar manner, as you can probably see, the partial derivative is going to look very, very similar. Um, so fy is going to be negative 2y, and therefore, just plugging this in, I get a negative 2. So that's kind of the idea. The idea of partial derivatives is that I am basically finding the slope of the tangent line in the direction of x or the direction of y at the specific point. And doing this kind of concept here of thinking about these um, is actually a really, really nice idea. 
and to be able to find tangent lines going forward. Because again, the idea of tangent lines is a little bit weird um, in three dimensions. You know, in, in a one dimensional case, in, in just a, you know, f of x, in a xy plane, I'm, o I'm only going to have one tangent line. I'm only going to have one tangent line, right? It's very simple. In this case, I have infinitely many tangent lines. So I have to be very careful to tell you where it is. In this case, what I'm saying is if x is constant, it's just saying fy. If y is constant, it's saying fx. These are the slopes. Now, going forward here, if, and that, that's kind of the idea going forward. Now, if I now wanted to, let's say, come up with a tangent plane, well, let's say I want to find the tangent plane to this, this exact point right here. Now, I hope you'd agree that there's only one tangent plane at a specific point. And again, I could do that by just picking a piece of paper. Up. I can notice that I'm going to find a tangent plane. And again, what is the idea of a tangent plane, right? It is a plane that as I get closer and closer and closer and closer to the surface, it looks exactly similar to the surface itself. And, and this can be described, we actually see this in the lab, which is hopefully very cool. We can actually see this in the lab where as we get closer and closer and closer to the surface, every single surface looks like a plane as an approximation. Because we get such a small domain, there's not really a chance for you know, the height to change drastically or the contours to change drastically. So it's going to look very, very much like a plane. And in order to do this, we only have one tangent plane at every single point. And we kind of just approximate it that way. So now let's remind ourselves what we need for a tangent plane. There's two things, right? What do we need just for a plane in general? Right? What do I need for a plane in general? Well, what I need for a plane in general, I'm going to erase this up here. I'm going to leave this picture because we're going to need it. But just as a reminder, what do we need? We need two things, a normal vector and a point. So as a reminder here, we would need a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero plus c z minus z zero is equal to zero. Our normal vector is a, b, c. Our normal vector is a vector that's perpendicular. And we also have a point, you know, x zero, y zero, z zero. Now, the point x zero, y zero, z zero, and this is actually pretty quick, right? I have x zero, y zero, z zero, but what is z zero? It's just the function height at x zero, y zero. So most of the time, we will just let this be the function at x zero, y zero. And the last thing I need is the normal vector. Now, there's many different ways we could find a normal vector, but in this case, it's gonna be a lot easier to try to find two vectors that are on my plane. So, and then what I'm gonna do, once I have two vectors on my plane, to find my normal vector, I take the cross product and it becomes perpendicular. So here, what's gonna happen? I can actually see something very, very quickly. I know that, I hope you agree, that this tangent line and this tangent line, these two tangent lines, are actually on the surface of my tangent plane. Approximation. So the tangent line in terms of in the, in the x direction and the tangent line in the y direction are actually two, two lines that are on my plane. And therefore, the direction vectors of those lines are on my plane, which then I can take the cross product of to get my normal vector. So how do I go about doing that? Right? How do I know what these slopes are? Well, I know the slope of this. Right? What is the idea of slope again? Right? The slope and the direction is, is, is you know, how fast am I moving the x, the y, and the z? Let's take, for instance, our fx one, this guy right here. This line right here, which is on my plane, is fx. Right? Now, what is that actually saying? I'm keeping y constant. I'm not changing y. I'm moving one in the x direction. This is what the fx says, right? I move one in the x direction. How much am I moving in my f of x direction? Right, uh, how much am I moving in the f direction? I'm moving fx. So you can kind of think about that I have this vector. I'm moving one in the x direction. I'm moving zero in the y direction because y is constant. And I'm moving fx in the z direction, right? How fast is that changing? That's the direction I'm going. Similarly, fy. I'm keeping x constant, so I'm not changing anything. I'm making y move just one, right? Thinking about the slope. And then fy. That's how much I'm changing in the z direction, right? 
fx over one, you're gonna think about this as slope, right? As I move one in the x direction, I have to move blah in the in the z in the z, z direction. As I move one in the y direction, I have to move fy in the in the z direction. And so these two vectors are actually on my plane. And so therefore, because these two direction vectors of these lines are on my plane, I take the cross product, and then I can get my normal vector. So let's do that. I'm going to erase this very pretty picture because I don't need it anymore. But that's the general idea. I now take these two, I take the cross product, and now I get my general vector of my normal vector. So here we go. Our normal vector here is then going to be the cross product, I do k, 1, 0, fx, 0, 1, fy. And just as a reminder here, I'm, I'm kind of um, abusing the notation a little bit. fx and fy are just evaluated at my specific point. I'll write this out more formally, but fx and fy are evaluated at, at x0, y0, y0. It's the, it's, the, it's the slope at that point. It's not the general vector. Just be aware of that, because these need to be constants. Right, A, B, and C. These are numbers, not, not, not variables. I now find this normal vector here. The I component, I'm going to get a negative fx. The J component, I'm going to get a negative fy. Remember, we flip on the second one. And the K component, I'm going to get a 1. And so therefore, this is my normal vector. Just by taking the cross product of two vectors that I know are on my plane. And so therefore, because of this, I can now set up my equation for my plane. Okay. So let's do it. I now have a point. I know I have a point x0, y0, f of x0, x0, y0. And recall that these things, fx and fy, are actually evaluated at the point x0, y0. Right? So this is really fx at x0, y0. And this is fy at x0, y0. And this is one evaluated at, well, one. Cool. So now, up here, a negative fx. x minus x zero plus b here, which is going to be negative fy. You know, y minus y zero plus, this is still one, z minus f of x zero, y zero equals zero. And so if you notice here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over these two terms. And I'm going to move over this term because it's only multiplied by 1. I'm going to leave z on one side. So we get z is equal to, we get fx multiplied by x minus x0 plus fy multiplied by y minus y0 plus f at x0, y0. And this right here. We sometimes name this z. We usually name this l of x, y. And this right here is the linear, the linear approximation. This right here is a linear approximation. And what we usually like to do here, what we do is we have a linear approximation to, you know, fx, um, to f at the point x0, y0. And this is going to be a plane. This is going to be a plane that lies right on top of the surface tangent to the surface uh, at x0, y0, just kind of hanging out there. And this will now give us some options as to kind of approximating this. And many times it's actually very helpful. If we have a very complicated uh, function here, we can use some approximation techniques to maybe get, you know, what, what uh, the approximate value of, a, of, of, of something is, um, which is pretty nice. So in using this, we can actually construct tangent planes now, but it's cool. We're going to see something in 14.6 of another way to construct tangent planes. And it's actually a very, very similar process. And, and honestly, that's a, a more generalized version, which is good. This is a very specific version when I only have a function of two variables, something like that. I, have, I don't have an implicit function, for instance, where I can't get z equals something or x equals something. So let's at least try this one. And let's try to calculate my whole tangent plane to that one. So now we have this. I need two things. Let's again go for 1, 1. So I want to find the linear approximation of the point 1, 1. 
So I want, I need to first off do a couple things, right? I need, I need my normal vector. So I need FX. I need FY at that point. I had already calculated that FX was equal to negative 2X. And so therefore FX at 1, 1 will just be equal to negative 2. If I want FY, I already calculated this was negative 2Y just by taking that derivative. At 1, 1, this is again equal to negative 2. And again, what I'm going to do is I note that my f at 1, 1, because I need that, I need the height that I'm at, is just equal to 2. And so therefore, my linear approximation, linear approximation here, is to say that around this point, around this area, very, very close, most points look like 2 minus 2x minus 1 minus 2y minus 1. Most points look like this around that point. As we get farther and farther away from 1, 1, it becomes a worse approximation. But very close, we actually get a pretty close approximation too. So here what we can do, kind of simplify this a little bit if we wanted to, we can get negative 2x, negative 2y. We would get a positive 2. We would also get a positive 2 here. So we would get a positive 6. And there you go. This right here gives us an approximation to our value, to our function at the point 1, 1. So around that point, we can kind of approximate. Instead of plugging in squares and doing something like that, we could do something much more simple like this. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot. It doesn't seem like, why would I ever use this? But imagine if you had a really, really complicated function, honestly. And you might say, like, what's, what do I mean by a really complicated function? You know, imagine you had some function here that maybe has some, um, you know, e to the x, y tangent of x squared, y. Like, this is really bad. This is really tough to even think about. Right? We know what that is, but we, we, can, we can't really draw this very well. I have no idea what that looks like. But what we can do is we can go the same exact process. And what if I wanted to just find, you know, maybe something close to this, right? What if I wanted to, what if I actually wanted to? in some way, do something like this, right? What if I wanted, to, what if I s said this and I said, okay, what if I want to calculate, I don't know, e to the 0 0.9 times 0 0.8 tangent of, you know, 0 0.9 squared times 0 0.8. This is pretty horrifying. I don't know what this is. I honestly don't know a numerical value. I don't really know anything. It's just really tough for me to think about. What I could do instead is the following. I could say, okay, well, let me actually instead do this. Let me say, okay, well, point, this looks like I'm approximating something near the point, point 0.9, you know, point 0.8. So what I could do instead is say, okay, well, this looks similar it's around near the point one, one. It's near the point one, one. And so what I could do is I can create a linear approximation near that point. You might say, well, why would I do that? Right? Why would I create a linear approximation? Well, if I create a linear approximation to one, one, what I can then do is it becomes just a plane, right? It becomes something of the form, you know, like really, really basically D plus AX plus BY, something like this. And all I would do from that point is just plug in 0 0.9 to x and 0 0.8 to y, and I'll get a pretty close approximation. And this is actually how a lot of computer systems work if they're trying to approximate things, uh, very, very, very values. And this is actually a really good way of doing it. Computational power takes a lot of computational power to do exponentials, and it also does a lot of computational power to do tangents. So, you know, thinking about this and maybe approximating something with 1, 1, creating a tangent plane, having that approximation near there, and then approximating it, it's not a bad idea. And very, very beneficial going forward, especially in a numerical sense. So this is the ideas of the tangent planes and partial derivatives, and I hope this makes more sense now. Um, I will discuss more stuff going forward, um, and I hope you guys are doing well. I am wearing my Shaun of the Dead t-shirt at the moment, um, and yeah, I'm gonna go grab Liz, I guess is my next thing to do. I've taken the car, I've gone to mom's, kill Phil, or any one of those things to do. So, and just wait till all of this blows over. Um, I hope you guys are doing well, and let me know what else you want me to talk about. Have a good one.